Welcome back. It's another month of solar stats for my solar array here in the UK. January just has kind of flown by with all sorts of uh, madness and mayhem going on in the world. But as usual, I'm going to cover the performance for my solar system here in the UK. Just before we kind of roll the intro and jump straight into it, I'll remind you of the setup. So it is a nine kilowatt solar array. I have 30 Pimar panels on my roof. They are connected down to a six kilowatt HD wave inverter from SolarEdge. In addition to that, I have a couple of things going on. I have a My Energy Zappi, which is used to charge two electric cars. I have a My Energy Eddy that is used to charge the water, charge the water, heat the water from surplus or on boost timer. Both of those are connected through a My Energy Harvey. That's just so I can have um, wireless CT clamps. And finally, in addition to that, I have a Tesla Powerwall 2, the one with a first generation gateway, so no backup capability. And in terms of my energy supplier, I use Octopus Energy and I'm on the Octopus Go tariff, which gives me electricity for four hours early in the morning at only five pence per kilowatt. Uh, you also can join Octopus Energy if you think it's the right one for you. There's a link in the description and if you use it, both you and I get 50% credit on our bills. Let's roll the intro and we go into the day by day. Okay then, so I'm just about to do the screen sharing, but one thing I'll mention in case you've not been watching any of these videos before, you'll see some common themes early on in the morning for my solar setup. So as mentioned in the intro, I have Octopus Go where I've got the cheap electricity early in the morning. So a few things happen in between 12.30 and 4.30 a.m. most mornings. So especially right now in the winter, there's not a lot of solar generation. So a few things tend to be happening. I have my Powerwall 2 will get kind of recharged as much as it can, uh, depending on what the algorithm is deciding to do. Normally it will fully charge to 100%. I also will have a bit of boost timed hot water happening from the grid as well. So even when, even when the central heating is running during the day, obviously that will do a bit of uh, heating of the water, but it will also boost uh, anything uh, for the water in that time as well. We also, if possible, we'll try and run dishwashers and washing machines during that period of time uh, as well. If I'm still awake and haven't gone to bed already, I will kick those off. And obviously our electric vehicles, we will be charging those a little bit um, from those times as well. So even though there's a lockdown, we still have had to do a little bit of travel this month, both um, obviously the supermarkets and a couple of hospital trips. But uh, apart from that, there's not lots of electricity charging on the cars, but we'll cover that at the end. So let's do the screen sharing thing and let's take you through the day by day and how the system has performed in January, 2021. As always, please leave a comment down below. Let me know how your solar system array has done and kind of what part of the world you're in. I'm in the Worcestershire West Midlands area for reference and uh, yeah, let's get going. So here we have it. So. In between the 1st of January and the 31st of January, the system produced 203.41 kilowatt hours. I was able to self-consume 97% of that, so 197.76 kilowatt hours, and we exported a little bit at 5.65 kilowatt hours. Uh, consumption, again, pretty high for the winter. Uh, again, if you don't watch these videos, during the winter over here in the cave, I have a two kilowatt panel heater that you can maybe see behind me there. Um, and that's running for at least half the day normally, uh, Monday to Friday whilst I'm here working. So uh, again, a lot of that is getting powered from that battery, but there is obviously a requirement for us to import. So we only self-generated 16% of our energy for the month. So if we have a little look over the month, we can see not really great solar generation for us during the month. And uh, yeah, a bit disappointing, but let's have a little scroll down and see how it compared to previous years. So it's actually pretty similar. So if we look here in January, 2019 was slightly better. 
2020 was a little bit better. And so 2021, actually, it has been our worst January to date. But we have had, I say a fair bit. For UK, we've had a fair bit of snow, which obviously was covering the panels and things and would have impacted our generation. So let's breeze through the day by day, starting on the 1st. So again, not going to mega detail on all of these. Again, we see the usual thing happening here in the morning, power wall charging, maybe some car charging, bit of water heating, bit of dishwasher and washing machine happening, which we see every day. A little bit of solar generation, but the main thing is with the battery backup, it kept us going through until early evening, then we had to start pulling from the grid again. And again, only two, just over two kilowatts, two kilowatt hours of generation on the first. Next day, a little bit better generation, nine kilowatt hours. Again, kept us going through until the early evening, telling you to pull from the grid again. Usual activities in the morning, not very good solar generation. You can see even by kind of early afternoon, we're having to pull from the grid, only 2.74 kilowatt hours. On the fourth, Again, not another great day, only 2.33 kilowatt hours of generation. A couple of surge spikes there, that must be making lunch or something. Again, not sure where you are. Here in the UK, we've got lockdown, schools are closed, so we're doing the homeschooling thing. So I'm obviously working from home like I normally do. My wife is always work, also working from home, if I can get my words out. And I've got two kids doing homeschooling as well. So we've got iPads, PCs on, and all sorts of stuff going on. And obviously, home people having lunches at home and stuff. On to the fifth. Big usage again in the morning, but slightly better generation. So we've got a couple of peaks there, just over four kilowatts, which isn't too bad. So 14.93 kilowatt hours. I'm not sure why we've got these little spikes here, but in general, we're off grid for the rest of the day until the charging happening in the morning. Poor performance there on the six, only 1.71 kilowatt hours. So again, we're pulling from the grid um, pretty much from lunchtime. Onto the seventh, another bad day, 2.64 kilowatt hours. Again, we're pulling from the grid again, pretty much from lunchtime to get us through the rest of the day. Pretty high consumption. And here we go, again, the eighth is pretty bad, 1.75 kilowatt hours. So again, pulling from the grid again, pretty much from lunchtime. Onto the ninth, not great uh, at 3.17 kilowatt hours, but our energy consumption isn't that bad, so it keeps us going until the early evening. Okay, and here we go again, 3.47 kilowatt hours, so not great, but again, not much energy usage. I can't remember the dates off the top of my head, but I'm gonna get bet that these are the weekends, because obviously we're not uh, working and the heating's not on in the cave, etc. So we're pretty good till early hours of the evening. Into the 11th, only 2.93 kilowatt hours. Um, so we've got all sorts of spikiness happening in the afternoon, so yeah, we're putting from the grid pretty much from lunchtime. On the 12th, usual grid pull in the morning, 4.06 kilowatt hours of energy generation. So again, just after lunch, we're pulling from the grid again. It's like a common theme, isn't it, through January? Usual morning pull, poor performance, only 2.16 kilowatt hours of solar. So again, just after four o'clock, we're starting to pull from the grid. Onto the 14th, again, usual morning pull, only 2.14 kilowatt hours of generation during the day there. And again, just was at half past five, we start pulling from the grid. Onto the 15th, usual pull in the morning, again, only 2.56 kilowatt hours of solar generation. This January really is pretty poor. And then we're obviously pulling from the grid uh, from about half past four. 16th, actually not a bad day for the winter here. So we've got a peak there, just over 4.6 kilowatts, generated 12.45 kilowatt hours. So again, we don't need to pull from the grid until we start to charge up the battery on the next day. Next day is also not too bad. We've got 12.62 kilowatt hours, peaking there, again, just over 4.6 kilowatts. 
weird little surge going on there, but apart from that, uh, the rest of the day we're, we're good. Don't need to pull from the grid till the early hours of the morning. 4.41 kilowatts, kilowatt hours on the 18th, not good. So early, early hours of the day, we start pulling from the grid all the way through the rest of the day and actually quite a high usage day there, 61.15 kilowatt hours pulled in terms of consumption, so 56.8 kilowatt hours. So must have been car and hot water and all sorts of stuff going on here. It's been really cold. Okay, so onto the 19th, usual stuff in the morning, 3.08 kilowatt hours of solar generation, not that great. And then from about half past four, we're pulling from the grid again. On to the 20th, usual morning activities. Look at that, 862 watt hours of solar generation. So pretty bad. Um, and we had to start pulling from the grid in uh, the afternoon about was that half past three. Okay, 21st, actually not some, some reasonable generation there. Peaking there, just over 5.7 kilowatts, which is pretty good. So 18.16 kilowatt hours for the day. Means you don't need to pull from the grid until the early hours of the morning. Another good day, look at that, it's a nice winter curve there. That's the total curve that we'd like to see. So peaking up at 4.98 kilowatts. So 21.61 kilowatt hours generated for the day. And again, don't need to pull from the grid until the early hours of the morning. Not a bad day again, a bit overcast. So we've got a little spike there up to 4.5 kilowatts, but 13.35 kilowatt hours of energy for the day. And again, we do need to stop pulling from the grid in the light uh, hours of the evening. Okay, getting towards the end of the month. Uh, again, an amazing 677 watt hours uh, on the 24th here. So pulling from the grid most of the day. 25th, not a bad day actually, look, good solar curve for winter, peaking at around 4.5 kilowatts, so 19.51 kilowatt hours of energy for the day, sees us through till the next morning. Another bad day, 2.93 kilowatt hours for the whole day, so again, pulling from the grid a lot uh, all through the day from very early hours, there we can see we're not able to meet the demand as early as 10.30 in the morning. Apologies for the dog snoring in the background. It's a common feature now on these videos. Uh, 27th, so 4.75 kilowatt hours of solar generation, not great. And then obviously pulling from around four o'clock from the grid all the way through to the next morning. 28th, 10.51 kilowatt hours of solar. So again, not too bad, not brilliant either. So just under four kilowatts peak at 10 a.m. and then kind of up and down for the rest of the day, and then we are having to pull from the grid in the late hours of the evening. 29th, some solid pull in the morning there. We've got not a bad solar day for January, I guess. Uh, peaking at 4.9 kilowatts, total of 12.4 kilowatt hours, enough to see us through, so we don't have to pull from the grid till the early hours of the morning. Um, then we got only 2.37 kilowatt hours here on the 30th, so again, pulling from the grid by about half five. Some strange peaks there, I guess there's hobs and stuff are coming on and off. And then the last day of January, again, must be a weekend. It was, it was, it was Sunday, even I know that, it was just yesterday. Uh, charging the car up. I know I've been charging the car up last night and hot water and the power wall. So big pull from the, from the grid. But again, even though that is a lot of pull, like nearly 50 kilowatt hours, remember it's all at only five pence a kilowatt. So it's actually not that bad. System production, 6.05 kilowatt hours, sees us through all the way until the very late hours of the evening. Right, so that completes the day by day. So just to finish up with some of the readings from the Eddy, the Zappy and the Powerwall. So in terms of the Eddy, so heating of water with surplus solar, there actually was a little bit, which kind of surprised me. So 3.98 kilowatt hours of surplus solar went into heating hot water. I'm actually surprised, I didn't think it was gonna be anything because generally has been pretty bad. And, it, and kind of a bit more surprising, but well, I guess every little helps as they say. Uh, with the Zappi, 
We had 8.25 kilowatt hours of solar surplus that went into charging the car. The rest of it came from the grid. Again, all off peak, it's only five pence a kilowatt. So um, 145.13 kilowatt hours from the grid. So in total, 153.38 kilowatt hours of uh, car charging. So that's into a 40 kilowatt Nissan Leaf and a Polestar 2. They're the two electric vehicles that we are charging at the moment. And then finally, if we take a look at the power wall, see how much we got out. So in January, we managed to get 406 kilowatt hours of energy out of our power wall. So again, all the energy in the power wall in general is either coming from solar surplus, which is quite small uh, in, in January because the weather's not been great. So a lot of it's coming, well, majority of it's coming from the off-grid energy with a little caveat of when it is completely flat, uh, probably like now actually, it's been overcast all day. I've had the electric heater on uh, most of the day. It will have to pull a little bit from the grid to kind of do some maintenance cycling. But again, that's only a kilowatt or so. So yeah, maybe a 16 pence or whatever it is per kilowatt just to kind of do some maintenance cycling. But in general, um, the combination of solar and battery still in the winter enables us to kind of have electricity pretty cheap really for a house of four with all this tech stuff going on so as always i thank you very much for watching i hope these videos continue to be informative both if you have solar already so you can compare kind of different solutions obviously based on different locations i want to hear how yours are performing as well but also if you're thinking about getting solar and batteries and other things this helps you give some indication about how things are going uh, month on month throughout the years that i have my solar system um, I'll just finish off by saying, touch wood, the roof hasn't leaked yet. So I'm really hoping that the, that kind of re-roofing has fixed the leak problems. We've had a lot of snow and rain this month. Again, I've had this before where I think it's all good, but touch wood, everything is okay. So I'm really happy about that. Hope you and your families are doing okay. Again, lockdown and COVID madness continues. If you're trying to homeschool your kids at the same time like we are, uh, wish you all the patience that you have for your families all kind of still contained with each other but uh, look after yourself and look after other people kind of stay safe and follow the rules please leave a thumbs up like comment and share it really helps the channel and i very much appreciate it and uh, i'll see you in the next video bye for now